Hi everyone, Jennifer Beaudry here out at Dynamic Earth. I'd like to talk to you about the mining industry today as we celebrate modern mining and technology Sudbury. Mining is a really important part to our everyday lives. If you think about it, if you can't grow it, you'll need to mine it in order to make something of it. Any of our digital devices, our phones, our tablets, computers, the kitchen sink, the stove, your bike, all use minerals that are mined from the mining industry. And Sudbury has been in that mining game for over 130 years. So there's lots of stories to tell. But why is that? Why do we have this ore in Sudbury? For that, I'd like to tell you a story. But this one goes back in time quite a bit. So we're going to start 1.85 billion years ago with a meteorite that's about to come barreling down into the earth. Now, 1.85 billion years ago, Sudbury wasn't where it is today. It was actually a thousand kilometers south of here, south of the equator, and we were actually a coastal region. So beachfront property right by the ocean would have been great. One small problem, 1.85 billion years ago, only simple cells organism lived on the planet and they actually lived in the water, not on land. So it was a big deserted beach at the time. Now, when that meteorite hit, so it's a meteorite that's 10 kilometers wide, it hit with such force that there are a number of things that happen simultaneously, it's all at once. The first is it produced a shock wave. So it hit so hard, a shock wave went through the rocks realigned some of the minerals and formed these conic features that we call shatter cones. So can you see the lines in the shatter cones and its beautiful cone shape? These, the point of that shatter cone points back to the center of that impact. Now, the next time you're out near Ramsey Lake Road, have a look and see if you can spot any shatter cones in the outcrops there, so in the rocks there. The second feature I'd like to talk about is what we call Sudbury breccia. So as that meteorite struck the ground, there's material, there's two kilometers of material that's been blasted up into the air. And a melt sheet on the ground was created. Now in that melt sheet, there's some angular pieces of rock that are already here that are moving around in that melt sheet. The material is starting to come back down as well. So here we have formation of Sudbury breccia as well as fallback breccia. So the fallback breccia, you can actually see that at AY Jackson Lookouts. So the next time you're strolling out there, you're looking for this dark colored rock that have all these little specks inside. So these are the, the material that was the last to come and fall back onto the ground. Now let's go back to that melt sheet. As that melt sheet began to cool, the heavier elements sunk to the bottom while the lighter elements and minerals stayed towards the top. And at the bottom, we find the copper nickel sulfide that we see here in Sudbury. Wind, water, even ice helped to shape the landscape that we see today. Sudbury was underneath a glacier about a kilometer thick. And on the bottom of that glacier, there was sand, mud, stones that would scrape on the bottom of all our existing rocks. It helped to smooth the rocks, but it also left scars on it. So you can see some of the rocks are gonna have straight streaks in it, or they're scoured, based on the direction of the glacier, the movement of the glacier. In the 1880s, when the Canadian Pacific Railway was starting to, to have its construction here in Sudbury, within our community, there was a blacksmith by the name of Tom Flanagan that found our rock a little peculiar. This rusty looking color to it that had a little bit of a gold coloration and silver in it. He scratched his head and said, you know what, let's get this tested. And there was a number of other people working along the Canadian Pacific uh, Railway here in Sudbury that had that same idea. And sure enough, after testing, it came back that it was very rich in a copper nickel sulfide. And that's what we're after today. Samuel J. Ritchie, an entrepreneur, founded the Canadian Copper Company and started to mine in Copperwood. And from there, we started having mines all across the Sudbury impact structure. We've been mining in Sudbury for 130 years. And throughout that time, technology has changed quite a bit. From the late 1800s to today's modern mining, the 
space and the process by which we mine has changed a lot, but the cycle remains the same. We still need to drill, blast, and muck it out, bring that ore back to surface. But how we do that has changed drastically. Instead of the pickaxe and shovels, we're using leading edge technology, load haul dumps that are autonomous. We have digitization, tablets and cell phones, LTE networks available underground, even in some of our deepest mines here, here in Sudbury. And switching over from diesel to electrical vehicles to make mines a safer environment. Mining has really changed. And the future of mining looks promising. How do we mine with a minimized footprint, still staying, staying socially and environmentally responsible? That is the key to some of the success that we are seeing in the mining industry. I look forward to seeing what the future holds and the innovations that will come out of modern mining. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. And we look forward to welcoming you back to Dynamic Earth when we come back together again. And you'll be able to learn more about earth sciences and mining. For now, see you later.